Hey, YouTube, welcome back to Axes and Allies of the Garrison. Uh, this is uh, Gargantua and Detroit coming to you with another episode of Decoding Axes and Allies. Okay, so today we have a special guest. He is known in the community as Corporal 24. Corporal is very involved. He's been uh, fortunate enough to have been able to participate at the 2017 YG Invitational in Canada. He's also been very active with the BBR. He's been... Uh, involved with the 2018, 2019, and 2020 BBR events. He's done very well on all three events and uh, his best performance was actually the 2018 event where he came in second place. Very uh, good for him and uh, great for the community because it was the first time that the BBR had been launched and it was a fantastic experience for all of us. He was also involved at the uh, Cold Lanta event hosted by GI Joe again in Atlanta, Georgia. And that was a, a fun event that I uh, was unable to go to. I actually bought my airline tickets, but because of personal reasons and work-related reasons, I was <laughs> unable to participate in that event. All right, so let's do some housekeeping here. I know that I mentioned in the past that we we're currently working on getting uh, Doug Friend uh, uh, interviewed here in the, in the in uh, the segment. However, unfortunately, because of scheduling reasons, uh, we have been unable to secure that event. However, I promise you, Doug Friend is on cue. Also, we were supposed to have released last week uh, a sea lion strategy where Gargantua goes over his sea lion strategy for global, uh, for global 40. Unfortunately, my bad, my mistake, I somehow must have deleted the episode. So. Uh, Gargantua was not a happy camper, let's say, but but it was an honest mistake. So that though that episode will be refilmed, we will uh, upload it as soon as we get that going, guys. So I apologize. Anyway, so here we have uh, Corporal Twenty Four. I consider him a very good friend of mine. Uh, we go back and forth. We talk about game strategies and game related subjects all the time. Okay, so before we go ahead with uh, with uh, Corporal Twenty Four. Gargantua, you have anything to say? Yeah, I do. Uh, so, so I know that, that Corporal 24 is a, a good friend of yours, but there's really only one thing that everybody wants to know, and everybody wants to know what happened, Corporal, in, uh, in 2020 that <laughs> after Detroit's 2019 performance that you basically <laughs> cut him loose the next day and said, I'm done with this guy. Uh, if I want to be a champ, I got to pick someone else. And, <laughs> and you formed a new team with someone else. So we really want some insight into that, Corporal. Maybe you can uh, lead us into that and, and let us know how much of a friend you and Detroit really are. <laughs> Absolutely. First, uh, it's a pleasure to be on here. Thanks, guys, for having me on. Our pleasure. Um, so after the 2019 bloodbath, uh, Detroit and I, we performed very well. We got fourth place. Um, so... 2020 came around and obviously COVID hit and I wasn't sure I was going to go to BBR three. Um, things were kind of up in the air. And finally I said, you know what? I'm going to go. And um, I booked my ticket. It was like, I'll say maybe a week and a half before the tournament even started. And I asked uh, Detroit, do you have a partner? I understand if you do, cause this is so last minute and he had already teamed up with war pig. So that was totally fine. And I was talking to a gentleman on Facebook and a guy who recently joined the BBR chat uh, by the name of uh, the chaplain. And I asked, hey, you know, I, I don't really know you, but do you want to be partners for the BBR uh, coming up? And he said, that would be awesome. And he booked his ticket. And uh, that, that's, how it, that's how it went down basically. And out of all things, uh, we met Detroit's team in the medal round and for the bronze <laughs> who saw that coming. <laughs> so there was no like hard feelings or no revenge or anything. It was, it was actually a very good game. Uh, it came right. out of the wire and um, uh, so it, yeah. it wasn't you, it was me and COVID and yeah, okay. I see how it is. Yep. <laughs> the thing, man. No problem. Okay. Yeah. I'll All right. That so for a dollar. Well, carrying on. All right. I know Detroit's got lots of questions to ask. So, uh, yes, take, take some thoughts. Out, yes. Let's so let's get into it. Uh, the generic question that I, we always ask everybody here in the channel is for decoding axes and allies is how did you get into the hobby? What prompted you? What, you know, what, what was the spark plug that got you into uh, axes and allies? Yeah, I would say it was uh, 1998. 
I was a junior in high school and I went to uh, Toys R Us into the, uh, the game store, which is out of business now. And um, I went to the game section and I was really into board games like Hero Quest, uh, Battle Masters, really into those fantasy games. But I've always had a big um, love for history, especially like World War II history. And I remember looking at the shelves and I saw this game, Axis and Allies. Now it was the original version, the one that came out, I think it was like 1987, the original. And I decided to purchase it. And when I got it, I couldn't find like anyone to play. Even my brother who <laughs> loved military history, who was in the Marine Corps, he had no interest at all. He didn't want to, he didn't have the patience that, nope, I don't want to learn. So I just started uh, playing myself, you know, which I still do play games myself a lot of times. And um, eventually I, I met a few guys in college and we started playing. But the thing with Axis Allies, you really have to, you have to have that passion for it because people lose interest right away. Correct. I guess, you know, I guess in board games in general, but so I started building up my collection. And when I was in college, I got um, Axis Allies Europe. Then I got Pacific and then I got Revise. And I just started building, building and building. And that's when I met people in the Bay Area. Eventually I found out about the form and uh, that's how I just kind of expanded my horizon. And right now, AxisAndAllies.org. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, the first uh, site I found though was Thrasher's Axis and Allies. I don't know if you guys remember that site. I do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that guy. <laughs> it, was a, it was a good site. <laughs> yeah, it was. He was hardcore. So um, I went on the forum and um, I just posted meet up in the Bay Area. And that's when I, the first guy I met was a gentleman by the name of Carl Seven. Wow. And, okay. Yeah, he, he was the first guy. And I, I went to his place in San Francisco and I thought like I was really good to be odd, but I never really had played good players at the time. The guys I played with were, were college guys who rather drink and just kind of mess around. So here I come against Carl Seven, who has a lot of games under his belt. I mean, this is like 2011, 2012. And boy, I mean, let's just say it got ugly pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that happening. I'm, uh, you've always spoken very highly of Carl yeah. Seven, that he's one of the toughest opponents or players that you know of in the community. So I never met him, never spoken with him, but uh, I, I, his reputation precedes him, not only from you, but, but from all the people that I've heard as well. So, okay. Yeah. So now, what is your favorite game variant? Out of all the Axis Allies games, I would say my favorite is the Anniversary Edition. Wow. Um, I call it a mini global. Um, it came out in 2008. You have Italy as a nation. You have China as a nation. You have national objectives. This was the first game that used national objectives, I believe. And that yep. was just awesome. I'm sorry to interject, uh, uh, Corporal, but do me a favor. The, your camera is shaking a little bit. I don't know if you're leaning up against your desk there, but it's rocking the camera a little bit. So if you can back off a bit. Maybe the rocking will stop a little bit. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, I apologize. Yeah, that's all right. Just figure out, uh, I interject there. So go ahead. I'm sorry. So anniversary, I really liked a lot. Um, like I said, I called it mini global. There's two setups. They had a 1941 setup, um, a 1942 setup. It's well balanced in my opinion. Um, it's a game that you could finish in a day most of the time. Um, it's just, it's just like, just like all around, just a very good game. I mean, I would give it an A plus. Wow. And as much as I love Global and uh, 1942 second edition anniversary all around, I think it's just the best game. That's just my opinion. Fantastic. Yeah. No, I, I, listen, I think Gancho is of the same opinion. He likes- uh, 100% big time. Yeah, so. Yeah. It's like, it's right. like when, uh, when you go like, I don't know, like uh, duck hunting, you know, and those guys, I mean, they're like $18,000 shotguns that are all like nicely enameled and all this engravings, all this beauty yeah. on it. Like those yeah. World War One machine guns. You're just like, yeah, yeah. That, that's what Axis and Allies <laughs> anniversary is. It's awesome. Absolutely. So if, if that was your, if there was one game that was your last game, unless you wanted to play for a really long time, <laughs> that would be, uh, that would be the game to play. So yeah. I totally agree. 
I would have to agree as well. Unfortunately for me, once Global came out, I never went back to anniversary, but I do recall playing the game plenty of times and being blown away by it because prior to that, uh, there was really the, 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 the revised version of the game and the theater games uh, were good, but I, I, the anniversary edition just blew those away. And it was, uh, I found it to be a lot of fun to play. But as I said before, once we went over to global, I never went back and played it again. But I know that uh, Corporal, you like to actually uh, play all the games, all the variants, right? So you're very much into uh, Anniversary, 42, uh, DBR, YGs. I think the only one that you haven't really played uh, are the HBG 36 and 39. That is correct. Now I do have the 36 map, but I'm short um, on pieces in that one. That's a big investment. And I also do have the 39 map, but there's more pieces I need. I haven't invested in those pieces yet. Um, I would say my go-to game lately has been, um, besides going to the BBR tournament and playing global every once in a while, the games I mostly play here, I would say, are Anniversary, um, 1914, which I'm a big fan of also, and the 1942 uh, Second Edition, which is a, a great game also. Those are probably the three main games I play yeah. here. I would love to play global, don't get me wrong. It's just the Bay Area is so expensive here and it's uh, tight quarters here, so. <laughs> uh, no, I, I believe it, I believe it, without a doubt. Um, any questions on your end, Gregantua? No, I'm good, I'm good, let's keep going. Let's right, hit then, him with the next one. Uh, what is your favorite country to play with? What are you the strongest at when playing global? In that, sure, uh, with global or BBR, my definitely strongest country is Russia. I know Russia. people hate, yes, yes. I know people hate playing Russia. I love playing on the defense in the beginning, just pulling back, uh, buying infantry, artillery, and just waiting for my opponent to come into Bryansk or what's the territory north of Bryansk? Belarus. Yes, Belarus. For, for some reason, I was thinking that Smolensk. <laughs> yeah, that's Anyways, that's well, yeah. I, love, I love when my opponent comes into those territories and I've I got a huge army in Moscow and I just hit him hard with those infantry and artillery. And I just love that aspect with Russia. Um, I know people think that Russia is too weak, but if you play Russia many times and you learn from people, Russia could be a very uh, strong country and global um, in my opinion. I have to say I'm surprised because uh, I've uh, played with you a couple of times and I've seen you play a couple of times. And when I, the times you've played with Germany, you definitely played very well. <laughs> so I'm surprised that it was Russia, to be honest. So, uh, I, I, I would have expected for you to have said Germany, in all honesty. So following up on that, which one is the weakest country that uh, you played with or that you find the weakest for you? Sure, before I answer my weakest nation, um, I do love playing Germany. That's probably my second. Oh, and, so that wasn't that know, far off. Yes, yes. And you know which country is really starting to grow on me a lot lately is UK. Well, you do <laughs> play UK well. Yeah. yeah. And, and well. Corporal, just so you're aware, you, you know this is a preamble to how he's going to defeat you in 2021, right? Like, that's why he wants to know what, <laughs> what your weakest link is, so it can be all yeah. like, oh, you should play this. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there, you know, whatever. Yeah. So just uh, choose carefully with whatever you say next. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Um, right. As for my weakest nation, by far, and uh, is Japan. I'm really bad with Japan. Um, you have so many fronts to fight on, and I just I've tried to learn from players like Carl Seven, uh, Argo Thayer, even GI Joe, who those three guys really excel with Japan. And I, I just I just struggle. I, I get in defense position really quick. And it's hard for me. I can expand at the beginning, but after a few rounds, I find myself in, in a defense position. I hear you. Uh, Japan is not an easy nation to play, especially at the latter stages of the game, at least with the BBR. Uh, mm -hmm. Round seven and round eight, you have so many variables going on and so many 
uh, enemies or opponents that you're facing and so many options that it gets very tricky. And if you're not an experienced player, uh, it can literally overwhelm you. I know I've been there a yeah. couple of times. Uh, before I go ahead with the next question, uh, Carl, another housekeeping room. Can you move your camera? I'm getting, by this point, I'm getting half of your face only. So can you move <laughs> it if it's possible? <laughs> How's that? Perfect, excellent, Better? excellent. Yes, all right. So I don't have a, I don't have a stand, so I'm just holding it, and my back is getting like. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, I apologize. Okay, maybe, maybe cut him a break right now, Detroit. I don't know. Uh, no where are we at with time? <laughs> it's gonna tough it out. It's gonna have to tough it out. I'm getting cramped. <laughs> okay, so uh, who's the All toughest right. player that you have ever played, or who do you think in the community of those players that you have played against is the toughest, besides Gargantua? Yes, I actually had never played Gargantua, and obviously I know he's a very good player. He could whip my butt, no question about it. Um, with all due respect to VK Cowboy, um, Hambone, G.I. Joe, and Argo Thayer, the strongest player I've played against, hands down, is Carl Seven. Really? Okay. We need, we need to get Carl Seven to get more involved with the BBR. Somehow get him involved yes. with this nope. uh, variant. I'm working on it. What I'm makes on it? And I'll, I'll if you uh, I'll chime in here real quick. What makes Carl Seven good? And he plays so many games on AAA. Um, he has like three or four games going on at a time. Wow. He, he's a, he's very strategic. He um, fast learner. Just a very strong player. Very aggressive. Always thinks ahead. Just a, all around. Just a very strong player. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to know the secret to defeating Carl Seven, because because I do it all the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I mean he's a very tough opponent. So uh, Carl and Seven and I always have a game. Always, there's always a game being played, and usually we have two two uh, yeah. partners. Uh, yeah. My partner's not twelve, and his partner is Cobalt. I think. No, I don't know. He's got an interesting name that he goes by, but we we all just call him Ray. Anyway, um, so the, the trick is with Carl is if you can get him sort of mid to late game, and you give him like a couple of bad losses, even if they're not that bad. But, you know, he gets diced or whatever. He gets frustrated pretty easy. Uh, and he tends to just roll over and give up. He doesn't, doesn't, oh, he yes. kind of loses the focus. And then he's just like, ah, oh, this game is lost. I'm out of here. And he'll just like, you know, throw his dice across the table and <laughs> skitter scatter all the pieces everywhere and he'll just fold. So that's, that's the secret to defeating Carl Seven. You guys, uh, I'm sure Break that he's going to watch this video. Break the morale. He's going to watch this video and he's going to get real <laughs> upset that I let his secret out. But that's, that's the way you, you just got to grind him out and hold on. Like stick to your guns. Yeah, wait yeah, him yeah. out and and eventually he'll pop and then and then you got to really start him and you got to play like oh it's not that bad man come on you can come back you know like what if i give you a couple guys you know and then he'll just ah. so that's you know that's, <laughs> that's my advice to you next time you play him is just don't don't give up first yeah <laughs> we were uh we were trying to get him uh, liquored up and hopefully he can get sloppy. That was He's, another strategy. No, you were no, he gets more dangerous when he gets liquored up because he'll That's go and true. take like you know risks on like thirty percent battles and win. Right? right. So like the more nips of the creature he's got, the more deadly he gets. So that's that's like his secret right. weapon. So be like, here's some water and bananas, uh, you know, and then he'll get cranky, uh, and then and then he'll he's more likely to fold. So yes, that's my, okay. My pro tip, I guess. Thank you. No right, problem. So, Good luck. So. We only have like about, I think about six or seven minutes left. So what, what are the advantages of uh, game variants like the BBR and YG's G40 tournament edition rules uh, in, uh, when compared or in contrasted with long uh, games, like uh, let's say maybe HBG's version or just a regular uh, out of box rule set where you go long-term. What, what, what is your opinion on that? Well, the main advantage with uh, YG's uh, tournament and uh, BBR is you can get a result in a day. If you play a regular gl global out of box or balance mod, which I love, by the way, which is also global. Mm -hmm. um, let's be honest. Those games are probably going to go two days, three days. I played a game one time against Carl Seven and we played balanced mod out of box global. And that game lasted 24 rounds. Wow. So if you can imagine, wow. yeah, this, it was very long. So no question, the, the main advantage with the tournament uh, BBR and YG is you can get a result in a day. And um, that appeals to a lot of people, which is great. I, lo I love when you get your result in a day, but 
I'll be honest with you, I also love those long grinding games that go on for a long time where you just have big armies in the Eastern Front clashing with like 100 divisions of infantry, huge battles in the Pacific with like 30, 40 destroyers. Um, I've always been a big fan of those uh, big battles. Yeah, without a doubt, there's definitely an appeal to those long games where you can project strategy and uh, it becomes more, the game becomes more strategic in nature when I think it's a long drawn out game, uh, I think. Uh, on shorter games, I think tactics, even strategy, but more, I think tactics play more of a role on the shorter games like the BBR or YG's version or variant, right? right. So I, I, I think I, I would have to agree with you, but by the, by the same token, uh, I think one of the, as you mentioned already, what's appealing, to, at least to me anyway, about the uh, BBR and YG's variant is uh, uh, the fact that you could play it in the day. And they, they're perfectly, actually, they were created, designed with the intent to be for tournaments. Mm -hmm. And then that's a very appealing to a lot of people. Uh, also, there are many people in the community that do not have the advantage of having a, 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 a bunker or a war room where they could pause the game, walk away, and then come back later, a week later, or a couple of days later, and finish the game. Most people out there do not have that advantage. So, so a shorter version of the game uh, can come in handy. Absolutely. No doubt. No doubt. So, all right. So anything else that uh, Gargantua, uh, Carl, I mean, Corporal, I'm giving away <laughs> your name. <laughs> Corporal, you want to say that you, uh, before we uh, end this episode? Yeah, uh, you know, 2021 is going to be an interesting year. Um, yeah. I know we have uh, two BBR tournaments. Uh, we have one in March to uh, my man, uh, Chaplin, great guy. He's hosting yes. one in St. Louis. And then you have Sired also uh, doing his thing in uh, September. Correct. So uh, um, hopefully everything will be okay with the travel. And um, if, if fingers crossed, I could attend both. Uh, are you guys planning to attend both? Yeah, I mean, I'm hopeful too, right? But of course, we got to see, you know, what what the, the 2021 is going to bring and, and how fast. So uh, we'll get through that. Uh, that. That being said, I was going to ask you uh, for our next strategy video, is there any element of the game, like, I don't know, Sea Lion or, or nations like India that you'd like us to do a, a session on first? Or what's your what would be your top ask to see a video on to kind of get some additional insight in? Um, you know, sea lion wouldn't hurt. Um, I'm always, I'm always interested in sea lion. Um, I'm not a big fan of it, to be honest, <laughs> but maybe I'm doing <laughs> it wrong. Yeah. I tried it, uh, one time against Argo there and, and I was successful, but then the next round I had a lot of tanks on my German border. So I obviously did something wrong, <laughs> but I think sea lion would be a, a good place to start. Cool. All right. Well, there it is Detroit. We got to do it again. Uh, absolutely, I, I, I agree. I, I myself, uh, I'm planning to, I already made a commitment to Chaplin uh, to be able to make it to the St. Louis BBR, which is going to be hosted, I believe, late March. Late yeah. March, yeah, late March. Not exactly what the dates are, but I believe it will be March, late March. Uh, I've also made a commitment to donate a, uh, customized pieces as uh, prizes to, to be awarded to the mem to those participating in the event. So. Uh, Chaplin uh, is already aware of that, so he's counting on me going to the event. But of course, I, there's no way that I'm going to miss uh, the BBR this coming yeah. September, so I'll be there as well. Uh, God willing, if I can and if I may, I, I plan to hopefully participate in other events if invited. Yeah. And um, no guarantees, but I, I, for now, at least two events, definitely. BBR, both events, uh, St. Louis, the other one in Atlanta, and of course, I'm making a commitment to YG also for his uh, YG Invitational, which is the 2022 tournament that he's hosting, I think, uh, August? Yeah. August, yep. right? Yep. So, so I, I plan yep. to be there as well. Uh, yeah, so I, I won't miss these events. I de definitely got to be there. Okay. Uh, so, all right. So before we go, uh, I just would like to uh, uh, make a shout out to a friend of mine, Gary Blevins, who is the host of uh, Board Game Nation. He not too long ago recently uh, launched his channel. The, the actual channel has been around for a while, at least the name, Board Game Nation. Uh, very articulate, 
uh, the quality of his videos, uh, beautifully, excellent, beautifully done. He's very professional. I, I highly recommend that those members of the community who are not yet subscribed to Board Game Nation to go ahead and do so. Uh, again, Board Game Nation, Gary Blevins. Uh, he's been very active in uh, Facebook groups, uh, putting his stuff out there. Uh, he actually interviewed Larry Harris. Very, uh, very good interview, very in-depth. Uh, uh, he got into a lot of the background uh, history on Axis and Allies and I uh, they went and they spoke a little bit about uh, uh, Larry Harris's uh, a father who was a World War II veteran on how that influenced the game and how it influenced uh, Larry Harris. So you know, kudos to Gary for for the interview and his channel overall. I can't speak any better. So in the near future, I will have a, a collaboration with Gary, uh, and uh, hopefully that that'll fire and that'll be uh, uh, something that you guys in the community will be able to enjoy. So uh, having said that, guys, before we, we uh, end the video, any last minute uh, commentaries, anything out there that uh, you it's popping up? No, thanks, Detroit, for keeping okay. us on task and getting the next video out. That's it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, again, I apologize for the delays in putting videos out there, but my bad, mia culpa, I somehow deleted the sea lion video <laughs> that, uh, that, Gargantua, uh, you know, gave an excellent explanation to his strategy. We worked very hard at it, but you know, I somehow deleted the damn thing. So I'm sorry for for cursing out here, but uh, it, you know, it, it happened. But uh, we're also working on the on the Doug uh, uh, friend interview uh, from HBG, and uh, we're also hoping to secure an interview uh, with uh, uh, a young grasshopper in the near future. And God willing, we'll get the man himself, Larry Harris. Uh, to be interviewed here at the channel. All right, guys. So hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. Until the next time. And as I like to say, don't forget to bunker down and play. Next time.